There are a number of ways you can improve your graphic design or web design some skills or business using AI art or platforms such as Midjourney. And I'm going to show you a few different ways you can use it right now that will save you a ton of time and improve your results and uh, just make things a bit easier when trying to get through the mountain of work you have in front of you. The first tip is to use AI art as inspiration for your concept. So you're not actually trying to replace your design with it, use it to get an idea. So you could do something simple, like if you have a dog wash business, you can type in dog wash logo, or you can say, you know, a web design for a car wash business. You can also do things such as social media flyers for events and things like that and get some ideas. You can punch in colors, things like that. And that gives you a reference to start and some ideas to get things moving. You can also create simple vector graphics, typing in something like a fast racing car, 2D, simple, vector art can be a great way to create an image that you can then feed into something like vectorizer.ai or vector magic and convert that to a vector image that you can use. Now it's not highly optimized for size, but you do create something you can scale quite easily and the results are actually pretty decent. AI art is also really good for creating unique textures. You put in some key phrases in there and add the word texture and you'll get something you can generally use in the background of a design. A step further with mid-journey add dash dash tile and you create a texture that you can actually repeat. It'll seamlessly repeat so that way you can scale it and have it repeat across an image or behind a design very effectively. This of course lends it to things like patterns or even just certain scenes or objects that you can also just kind of like pop in the background. Abstract patterns and backgrounds are also very powerful using this kind of uh, process. Also combine a bunch of these elements. Pop one in the background, overlay bits and pieces of the other, and you can create some really unique images that way as well. I did this recently for a YouTube thumbnail for High Point Music. If you want to learn how to play guitar, check them out in the link in the description below. They have a YouTube channel, with some awesome tutorials. But using Photoshop and applying your skills to the images you create in AI art allows you to get something really unique really easily. Speaking of YouTube thumbnails and any design really, sometimes having very odd or unique images is a great way to draw attention. This is a huge thing on YouTube, but it can be applied anywhere. Now it can be difficult to actually find images like that online or take them yourself, or you can spend an hour or two trying to make them yourself in Photoshop and then trying to find a way to charge that money to your client, or with a few clicks you can go into AI art and create some very odd and unique looking imagery and simply incorporate that into an image or design. That is one of the other powerful things. If it doesn't exist in reality, AI can create it pretty quickly, save you a ton of time, and you get to deliver a far more superior service for less money to your clients. But even if you don't need something strange, sometimes you just need a good stock photo and you can't find it. Using AI art and just adding in a few things such as 35mm lens, uh, bokeh effect, other words that will make your your images look more photorealistic can enable you to actually create images that you just simply can't find on stock photo sites. So it's handy not only that, but just as a source of stock photography. Now, just remember that you can't copyright protect any of the images you create with AI art, but you can still use them as you would if you're downloading something from say Pexels or Unsplash. You can also do AI photo or image editing. Head to something like uh, Playground AI or Leonardo AI, use their canvas or sort of like in-painting, out-painting features, and you can actually edit your photos with, with AI if you're trying to move very quickly and need to make some edits that might be a little bit difficult. You might find it easier to do some things in Photoshop, but you may find some things easier using AI. Another cool use of AI art is simply for cool overlay effects. I've done this a lot where I've created some images and put like a plain background on something and created some cool overlays. So uh, I've used some black and white images, some ink dripping type style images, and I've been able to go into Photoshop and overlay those with a, with a blend mode that really sort of promotes a cool effect. And it's a really great and handy way to use AI art to improve your designs further. Another really cool thing is you can actually speed things up, especially when you're using Mid Journey or another platform where you're comfortable using your phone. If you're not at your computer, but you need to get some work done, maybe you're waiting for something, you can sit there and actually just prompt on your phone and create the images you need. You don't need to be in front of a computer to do it. You just simply need to grab a Discord app or something like that, and you can start generating these images on your phone. Another tip, when using Mid Journey, you can type 
type in a few commands like dash dash repeat or use permutations to create many images with one command. So you can actually create a ton of AIR images really quickly using those features. So it's really handy for trying to be productive when you can't get to your computer. What's also cool is everything I've just mentioned, you can create very unique resellable assets for things like stock photography sites, maybe texture packs, anything like that that you can use to generate some passive income. You can use these things and resell them as packs and actually make a little bit of money that way as well. Now you can sell this on your own website. You can create a website on Payhip to sell digital products, or you can sell on a marketplace such as Creative Market, uh, Envato, or Master Bundles, something like that. Uh, I also just recommend if you're gonna do that, make sure they're high resolution. Grab something like the Topaz Gigapixel Upscaler. I'll pop a link to that in the description below and a tutorial to get something. So you take a 1024 for 1024 pixel image from Mid Journey, upscale it to over 6,000 by 6,000 pixels, and you've got something that's really amazing that you can sell quite easily. And if you are using Mid Journey, use slash describe to generate uh, a description of certain images. When you upload an image, it gives you a description and that way you can learn certain keywords and phrases that help you find more suitable graphics or describe your work more accurately to your clients or if you're outsourcing. Very handy for improving how you can communicate within graphic design, which is a massive part of doing business. Because the thing is, AI art is, is quite good. It's amazing what it can do, but it will not replace human artists or design. You simply can't compete with someone who is very deliberate about what they're creating, someone who has control over every step of the process. AI art is really awesome for creating images and items that can speed up progress or do the bulk of the work, but it's rare that you'll be able to simply use AI art to replace your job altogether. It's just not quite there, and I don't think it will quite get there. They will always need that human touch. So it's always good to think about these things, not as a replacement, but as tools to speed you up and empower what you're doing with graphic design. Now, I obviously, I recommend if you're gonna use AI art, get a good, uh, good methodology for converting items to vector. Get a hold of Photoshop so you can edit your AI art, and I highly recommend Topaz Gigapixel so you can upscale that. But furthermore, just I highly recommend staying in touch with this technology because it's not going anywhere. It's gonna be constantly changing and constantly evolving, and it's gonna affect what we do as designers and artists online. So at least keeping your finger on the pulse so that you can actually roll with this and actually and actually ride the wave so that you can still use those skills you spent years honing and perfecting, but simply using AIR as a nice little boost or side tool if you need it, but at least stay in touch. Otherwise you will get left behind and find it difficult to evolve with the industry. And since our income is tied to this, we definitely don't want to be ignorant to it. So that's my video for today. A very simple, quick little video to help you understand how you can use AI art and as a graphic design tool. Uh, if you have any other thoughts or any other tips, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear them. Otherwise, thanks for watching the video and I hope to see you again soon.